Welcome to my series about old Chopin's music. Today, prelude number eight in F sharp minor from Opus 28. As you can see, the camera angle is a little different because today I want to focus on the difficulty of this piece. It is definitely one of the most difficult, pianistically, prelude uh, written by Chopin. And um, so, um, to, in addition to the traditional analysis that I'm going to make, I will also make a kind of analysis of difficulties and then I to, sh to show you what exactly are in, in this piece. But first, of, all, of course, when we listen, when we see the, the hands uh, of a pianist, we immediately feel and realize that this is a bloody very difficult piece. But the question is, did Chopin write the piece especially uh, to be difficult, that his intention was to make it difficult? Certainly not. Chopin was not like Franz Liszt, Sigismund Thalberg um, and thousands or hundreds at least of, of other um, pianists, virtuosos, who uh, were living at the same time that Chopin, like Charles Alcan and all the others. Well, there are many. Anyway, um, Chopin was different. For him, music was always at the first place. And even when he wrote difficult pieces, these difficulties were only for had had only some other purpose. And this is exactly in this piece. That's how it is. Because what we have to do today is we have to analyze, we have to describe the character of the piece, what the composer who wrote this piece, what he wanted to express, what character he wanted to achieve. Secondly, analyze the difficulties and also analyze the structure of the piece. As you can see, this is a, there, here we have a lot of notes. There is thousands of notes in this prelude. And you know, I counted notes. I, I'm crazy, I know. But first of all, this prelude, my friends, has only 34 bars. To compare with the previous one, the short one, it had 16. Here we have only 34, but what a huge difference it is. And in these 34 bars, I counted that Chopin used 1,558 notes. 1,558 small little black dots on the paper. Did he write that in Mallorca? Certainly not. We have the proof in my uh, wise books that this prelude was written before and he brought it together with him to Mallorca. Of course, because he had no time and power 
to write 1,558 notes in Mallorca. He was wanted to get rid of this. I mean, he wanted to finish the whole cycle and send it to the publisher, get the money, and then pay back to August Leo, of course. But uh, what is the character? I, stormy, uh, in quiet, fast. Um, we feel scared, we feel pain. I mean, in harmonies, I'm going to show you when I play it slower. In harmonies, Chopin is definitely expressing pain. This can be a physical pain or it can be also the pain of the soul, the inner pain. Um, in harmonies, especially, because of course the tempo is fast, but when we play it slow, when we play this prelude slow, we actually reveal the whole beauty of the harmonies. Because how this prelude is constructed from the pianistical point of view, I show you now, because there are quite many difficulties. First of all, the pian... well, I mean, this is a prelude... Uh, this prelude is only for professional high-class pianists, I have to say. Um, because, first of all, of course, you need to have very fast fingers, but that's not all. On, let's just take only right hand. What we hear, we hear the melody. Which we are going to analyze a little later. But also in the same hand, we have a lot of notes which are accompaniment uh, around this melody. Of course, this is not an etude, it's not written, uh, I mean, all these notes are not important. We, we cannot play them equally. Because then it's ugly. We have to hide them. So this, here comes the difficulty, the second difficulty. First difficulty is to uh, play it very fast. Right? This is how it sounds without the pedal. So the, the speed is very fast. But also these small notes, they had to be touched, they has to be touched in a different touch. So the pianist must have two, in a very fast tempo, two different touches. This one and this one. And of course we practice that first slowly, just like I showed you now. By, and we listen to the melody and we, we put in the background all the small notes. I like to imagine that these small notes are just ghosts and the melody is the real person. It sounds scary, even even the whole the only right hand when when we play together when we play slow. Very scary. But anyway, this is not the end of the uh, difficulties. There is a left hand, and left hand is not equal. I mean, it comes between the right hand. So we have the polyrhythmic uh, rhythm. I showed it to you. If you watch my video about fantasy and Pompti, Chopin is doing the same. <laughs> A very similar technique, but here is a little bit more difficult. In the left hand, well, that's why I close the keyboard because I want to show you here. The left hand plays one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three. The right hand at the same time plays one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one. So these are not even. So. And why? To make it difficult? No, to give the character of the music. And this is the goal of uh, what I want to say, that these difficulties are just, they serve for the character to make a, like, like a circle of, of sound. This is like, um, I would say, the sound is, there's just a wave of sound like a tsunami of the sound in the air. The sound, you know, the sound is also waves. This, 
we we don't see them unfortunately well, maybe fortunately but when there is a lot of sounds there is a huge wave and it comes to our ear so uh, that's exactly how this prelude is constructed and we have very fast right hand and left hand comes in the middle so the impression the impression is that it's even faster um, and of course it's a difficulty it's for amateur pianists extremely hard because they usually have problems with I mean the beginners especially they have problems with polyrhythmia but uh, of course after many years of practicing and when you are concert pianist this is not the main problem but the problem is uh, also the stamina because there is nowhere to rest so we need to have a very relaxed uh, hands and it's hard when you play a piece which is very dramatic like this one uh, because if you don't then you feel pain in the middle of the piece and you don't know what to do and in the middle of the piece there is a huge climax with so you don't you cannot feel pain so it's this is really hard anyway um, now I played for you slower just for you to see the har and listen and absorb the harmonies that we have here these small notes when they are played uh, in the pedal <laughs> They sound like this, but of course Chopin um, used it in a, such a beautiful way, we don't hear that, because they are in the background. And they create the wave of the sound. Just listen to these harmonies. It's also beautiful in slow tempo. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking about it now. I feel pain. I feel deep pain in this music. It's not often called a prelude that um, express pain, but I, when I play, when I learn it, when I play it slow and then faster, I feel pain. I feel a lot of this crying like screaming, ah, 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 and this we have here in the melody. And it's, it's important to express this. How, I mean, now let's make an analysis, the formal structure of, an, of, of this piece. So, um, when we have um, the first, First, firstly, let's focus on the melody. Uh, I, well, I'm hesitating now because, as you can see, because I want to talk about musical period. And as you remember, on my last video, I was telling you about the musical period. And uh, because we were talking about... And I told you that this is one musical period, and that's the end of the piece. Only one musical period that consists of two phrases, antecedent and consequent. And then I forgot this, the third the antecedent word, so I had to check. Okay, I need that for my video, so I, that's why I know. Antecedent phrase is the first phrase, like the question, and then the consequent is the second that answers the first one. And here we have exactly the same. So let's listen now to the first musical period of this prelude. <laughs> And 
descendant and now there is a consequent. It starts like the same, with the same melody. It goes higher. And this is the end of the first musical period. How it is constructed? A very typical Chopin, Chopinian way. We have the melody, which is repeated. So short, short, and then long. Short, short, long. So short, short, the same and long. The same, the same, the same, the same. And many Chopin pieces has the same thing. Mm. The melody is based on seconds. Surprised? No. Because, listen, second, 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 all the time. Second, 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 minor and major seconds. The, 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 the shortest interval. Why? Because the first prelude It's the same material, same motivic material. So I'm sure that Chopin had this idea to put together in preludes the material of repeated seconds. Of course, not every prelude is so obvious, but in every prelude we have that. Here it's, I think, very obvious. The whole prelude is based on seconds. Um, and this, uh, as I told you, this melody has all the time these screams um, which the pianist should emphasize. And then the answer for this is this all the time screams. Right? And then the consequent phrase. the second musical period. The idea of Chopin in this second musical period is to build up huge energy and reach the climax which will uh, appear in the next musical period. The huge dramatic climax when Chopin is shouting forte fortissimo but now we are going to build and now what the composer should do to build the energy in the music. Of course uh, go up, us usually, not always, but the common sense is telling us that we should go up, right? Because that's, we accumulate the energy. Here, of course, Chopin, well, he, he's a genius, and we all know that. And he constructs these steps of energy with short phrases that are going down. Surprised? Because I was. Listen. First one, second one, third one, and the fourth one, right? This is really unbelievable. And these phrases, of course, they have again this feeling we, it's full of pain because we have chromatic scales going down. All the time, ah, right? Like a music, it's, I mean, the music describes this kind of human behaviors. I cannot stop thinking about it when I play. So let's listen to this, uh, the building up the climax uh, with short phrases that are going down. Again. And here we reach the biggest climax, maybe one of the there are two. This one is 
The first one is forte fortissimo and Chopin is shouting. No, we are shouting. The music is shouting. <laughs> Shouted out uh, in the air what he had inside, and then he stopped. There is a silence, and the echo, maybe in the mountains, you know, the echo is shouting back. This is such a beautiful, touching moment. Again, let's listen to the shout and then the echo. <laughs> beginning of the piece so with part A and now the part A starts from the same little motif but then immediately goes higher then higher and faster and faster faster then we reach the top again big climax which goes totally down all over the keyboard and the coda starts but before the coda we will hear in the left hand the motif uh, of the will like I mean it must be you know like in Beethoven. It's a very important motif because after this motif everything will collapse and there will be a coda of, of the same motif that we had before but totally tired, tired of fighting. So this can also be a symbol of fight and we have two climaxes um, the, let's listen now to the second climax that we have, all the forte fortissimo. So part A again. And here the climax. that it must be over the fight is over you lost says the left hand to the right hand and the right hand now is the coda is absolutely amazing let me show you the colors now I turn off my light I mean it's not a big difference but there is some difference just to show you how Chopin is uh, playing with the major and minor here we have the minor <laughs> same motif in major major minor and everything happens on the same note which can sound either dark or Uh, I think it's, um, um, it's fantastic, unbelievable, like the, you know, we wander between the light and the dark, the darkest. Um, so this is very, very special. The ending is very special. Everything like falls, falls asleep and ends. Now maybe you noticed the last thing that I want to tell you. What is very fascinating in this prelude is that all prelude is based only on one rhythmical structure. From the very beginning to the very end, we have constantly pam, pa 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 pam, obsessively repeated. Maybe like heart beating. Um, so, Witold Lutosławski, great Polish composer of the 20th century, called this prelude a miracle. And I agree. I think one of the most difficult to play, to learn, to perform, but also uh, one of the mm, most special, I would say. Uh, the prelude which really uh, touches us deeply and um, I love to perform it. So um, maybe I play it for you again.
and I try to make all the screams understandable. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> for watching and see you again in my next videos. Bye bye.